Welcome back. And as always, uh, we do Friday sports conversations. And uh, today's not going to be any different. Wally Scott is joining us, or has joined us, rather, uh, to talk sports this morning. Good morning, Wally Scott. Good morning. Great to have you on the Good program. Morning, Good morning, Wally. Now, of course, uh, biggest conversation across um, you know the African sporting world is Afcon. Starts off on Sunday. Uh, there was a little bit of controversy here and there, you know, different nations, and of course, even you know to send players or allow players, you know, to come down here for the tournament. Uh, but eventually, you know, have uh, arrived. So let's talk about preparations. Um, how ready is the African continent? How ready is, you know, every country who is going to be there? Is the continent ready? I don't know. Because, um, first of all, um, we're hearing stories about um, a particular city in Cameroon called Limbe. Yes. The city has been um, a case of terrorism, bombings for a while now. And, and some, uh, players, some, some teams were threatened. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah, they're still being threatened. And um, the, the group wants to form a, a group out of Cameroon called Ambazonia. Yeah. And they've threatened to actually bomb the stadium during the matches. Now, the Group F matches will hold there. Tunisia is in that group, and um, they will play their matches there. And um, they are major security presence in Limbe right now. That's the only problem we have for now. Cameroon, all, all, all are ready, mm. except for Limbe. But um, the little problems that we have is that, uh, yes, some teams didn't want to release their players. Um, some players have their key players. Some teams have their key players in that team. Leicester City, for example, have Wilfred Indidi, have Kelechi Nacho, who are their main players, first 11 players who are coming for the Nations Cup. But the most hit is definitely Liverpool, who are losing Sadio Mane and Mo Salah, yeah. who are their major strikers in the team. But Nigeria have their own problems too, because um, a certain Dennis, who plays for Watford, who is doing very well for his team in Watford, has said he's not coming because Osime was called initially. Osime That's couldn't make it. Osime couldn't make it. And then Dennis was called as a replacement. And he says, I don't want to be an alternative. You should have called me in the first place. Why call me now? Because Osime is not coming. Now we have sent for two players, two strikers who are, one is on his way, one has refused to come. Eguavon has begged us, we presenters, not to call their names yet because he was scared they might say no, like Dennis did. One has accepted, he's on his way. When he arrives, we will announce that he has arrived. You know? The other guy is still being spoken to. Hopefully, he will accept to come. So we are two strikers short. We are one striker short now. But all in all, will the Nigeria Super Eagles do well? Yes. Yes, we will do well. Um, individually, we are, fant we are, we are a fantastic team. I um, mean, in, in like three or four sports magazines, a French sports magazine, a German sports magazine, named Joe Aribo and Chukweze as players of the future, legends of the future in football. Yeah. That's how good our team is. Will we play together as a team? Will we bond as a team? I won't speak for that. That will be up to Eguavon's technical abilities. However, Messi was asking me a few minutes ago and saying Egypt. And yeah, yes, because I was going to that ask is the problem. The opening match, I mean, we're starting off with That Egypt. is the problem so, because um, I'm a big fan of consistency. I believe that if Osarogi has 11 players who play together on a field every Sunday and we bring in internationals, professionals from abroad who come together and didn't train together at all, I believe there's a large tendency, 80%, that Osarogi's team will beat that team. Because they play together consistently. So the bond you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, but we don't have that. We don't, we, we've never had that. Because yeah, our players. This is play, like every tournament. Is, is, our players is, is, is train together player. at yeah. most five days together. And these are guys who play in. Somebody plays in Seska, Moscow. Somebody plays in Laurent, in the French Club Championnat. Someone plays in the English Premier League. Someone in the Bundesliga. Coming together to train together for four days, three days. How can they bond? However, the pharaohs of Egypt have got. Fantastic players. Of course, they've got the almighty Mo Salah in the team. But don't forget, there are 11 players on that field of play in the Pharaohs of Egypt. Seven of them playing Al Ali. Okay, so they play together week in, week out. Oh, okay. So that's going to be probably really yeah. so, but there major. Are, there, are, there are also feelers that, you know, the likes of um, Odion Igalo are probably off. Um, Igalo is not coming. So, like so, I told, so where does that leave us? Now? I was on a radio show this morning on, on the phone life and i told them on the show and i said Odio Igalo is behaving like an illiterate 
and that is the truth. You know, now there are people like Igalo, they make them they abuse Ajegule. And it's not fair, really. Igalo signed a contract with Al Shabaab. And what he told them in the contract was, I have retired officially from international football. He told them that it's in his contract. And then you call them now and say, Oh, all of a sudden my country has called me and I have to go. And he's refusing to train. And he has been fined right now. Odin Igalo was fined this morning of a large amount of euros for not coming to training. He is actually boycotting training because Al Shabaab did not let him go. Forgetting that he signed a contract saying that he had retired from international football. At that time, he had retired. Yes, he had retired. So if the country calls you now, there are ways you can. There's always a humane part of management. Go to that humane part yes. and talk to them and say, I didn't expect this call up, but the country needs me. But, but, Guys, how can you help me out? That's a different case. Yes. But boycott him um, training and say, I'm not going to train. Because you signed a contract saying you had retired from international football. That's not their business if they call you now. It really is not. Well, don't um, blame the club for let's, letting let's also, go. With the time that we have, let's also look at the uh, coaching strength uh, that we have and you know what, what are the possibilities of uh, Nigeria going far, you know, of Senegal Avoy and you know, the rest of the, uh, the team. The boys know him. They know Senegal Avoy. He used to be um, for Super Eagles International. But one positive effect we'll have from this is that we won the Nations Cup last under Stephen Keshi who was a homegrown yeah. coach. And um, Stephen Keshi did something that stunned the world, not only Nigerians. When we met Cote d'Ivoire, Cote d'Ivoire at that point was the biggest team in Africa. They had everybody who was a star. Didier Zokora, Didier Drogba, Yaya Toure, Kolo Toure. They had everybody who mattered in world football from Africa. They were the biggest African exports to the world. And we beat them 2-1. And the... Ivorian coach, let's take a look from that. The Ivorian coach came out and said, listen, I had a list of players who would give me problems in that team. And the guy who scored the second goal against us, Sunday Mba, who played for Rangers then, was not on my list. He was, it wasn't a problem for me. And he was eventually, so it, which means our homegrown coaches know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. However, World Cup is a different ball game. It's Oyembo football. So we can play as we like. But the African Nations Cup is all grit, strength, physicality, and Egwa Voin should know better. Mm. Like Stephen Keshi knew better. Genoro, all his years, he is the longest serving coach of the Super Eagles, 64 months, and he didn't win the Nations Cup for us. Stephen Keshi was there for just one season, and he won the Nations Cup. So hopefully, Egwa Voin is back, a homegrown coach who played for the Super Eagles, maybe. Just maybe you can do this time around. Because you have actually mentioned, I mean, on this, but we've had several conversations and you keep saying that, you know, one of the major issues we're faced with is the fact that we don't have a coach that is very tactical. And so you're saying with all of this that we hope to see some tactics and that's why we haven't gone great. So you, you, are you saying that, um, um, you know, having these boys go through um, on Monday, we're going to see that tactical coach and all of that coming through? Genaro was a foreigner. Mm. He never knew anything about Nigerian football. Egwavoin played for Nigeria at the international level. And when he played for Nigeria, we were playing wing play. That means coming from the wings. Yes. To your, to your, which means that we had Amonike on the wings, we had Amokachi on the wings, we had Fidili George on the wings, Ikedia on the wings, and he played in that team. And the first thing he announced when he became coach was, I am going back to wing play. That is what Nigeria is known for. I am going back to wing play. Which means we might see very talented, very skillful, Good dribblers like Joe Waribo, like Chukweze on the wings for Nigeria. Alex Iwobi on the wings. That would be nice. That would be going back to what we know Nigeria to play for. We play from the wings. We attack from the wings. I remember that we almost beat one of the best teams in the world at a point at USA 94. Italy. Italy, we're, we're down. We're 1-1, 1-0. We're almost going to score the goal. And Arigo Sachi, their coach, stood up and pointed like this. And he went back to his seat. And Amokachi was out, and in five minutes, Amonike was out, and they won that match. Our major strikers, attack, wingers, who could make it happen. And so the, the, and it was actually red what could have gone wrong with that team, which means if he goes back to the wings, well, and this time around, we have fantastic players, almost as talented as the Amonikes and Amokachis, Joe Aribo, Chukweze on the wings for Nigeria, going up against an opponent. Like I said earlier, somebody says I was lying, I'm only being funny about it, but I'm not. 
Nigeria will beat Egypt come January 11th. We will qualify from that group. And for some reason, I feel we just could with their nation's cup. And All what right. happens if we don't beat Egypt? Be Adi, right. that better to you. <laughs> 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 all right. That's, that's the answer to that question. Thank you very much, Wally Scott. For Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. always. And this is where we wrap up um, the uh, breakfast for this morning and for the week. We'll be back here again on Monday morning. Thank you uh, for your time and for uh, joining us. Remember where to catch up if you miss out on any parts of uh, the discussion or through the week. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Instagram, and the same with our YouTube channel. Also, at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osaogi Ogbawa. And I am Messi Boko. Do have a fantastic Friday.